let's look at how we use the Avico method or the average cost method, also known as the weighted average cost method. Yeah, so we are going to use the same question. The following information is available to you concerning material records of a certain manufacturing firm of the month of June 2016. So this is the information they have given us. Then required, prepare a stock ledger card and determine the following. The cost of goods in production, then the value of closing stock using the Avico or Avico, which is average cost or weighted average cost method. Yeah, so the format of the stock ledger card is the same. So it's for the manufacturing firm, stock ledger card for June 2016 using the Avico or Avico method. Yeah, so we have four columns. The first one is for the date. Then the second one is for receipts or purchases, where we have its quantity, rate, and then amount. Then the third one is for issues, where we have its quantity, rate, and then amount. Then the last one is for balance, where we have its quantity and then amount. So we are going to look at them one by one. So these things of the Avico, LIFO, then the FIFO method, they only apply to issues. For receipts and purchases, we, we, we rate them the way they are. Yeah, but for issues, it's where we apply those methods. So first in, first out, average cost, stuff like that. Yeah, so June 1st, opening balance, 100 units at 1,000 each. So we rate it June 1st. It's not a receipt and it's not an issue, but it is a balance. So 100 units at 1,000 each, 100 times 1,000, which is 100,000, sorry, 100,000, like that. It's not significant, sorry, 100,000, like that. Then on third, there were purchases 50 units at 1,200. So third, there were purchases. Here it's where we put purchases. They were 50 units at 1,200 each, which makes it 60,000 this times this. Then on fifth, purchases 30 units at 1,300 each. As I said, purchases, you just rate them straight. So for fifth, there were 30 units at 1,300. So this times this, we get the amount which is 39,000. Then on 8th, there were shortages of 9 units. Shortages of 9 units. So here, under additional information, they said 8 units shortage was part of the third purchases. So this shortage was part of the of the purchases that were made on third so meaning we are going to use the price of the purchases that were made up on third so on eighth there were shortages we consider goods stolen and shortages as issues eh? so they were nine units we put them under issues here nine units at one thousand 200 since they were part of this 1,200 so this times this it is 10,800 sorry I was I was forgetting to write the balance so for the balance after every transaction after every receipt or issue you write the balance so for the purchases we add so it's this plus this so it will be 150 then for the amount, this plus this, to be 160. 160,000. Then for the second one, this plus this, it is 180, becomes the balance. Then this plus 160, it's 199,000. 
Then for the issues we subtract. So this minus this, it is 171. Then this minus this, it becomes 188, 200. Then we continue. On tennis, that way issues of 40 units. So on tennis, that way issues. Issues are here for 40 units. So we we said these methods of avicoli for they only apply to issues. So the rate, when we are determining the rate, so 40 units but at what rate? So here since it's the average cost method meaning we are going to be getting the average but how do we get the average price? So this is how we get the average issue cost. We get the previous purchase cost plus the current purchase cost out of previous purchase unit plus the current purchase unit. That's the formula that we use. So here, what are we going to consider? So the previous one, we, we, we have this and this and then this. So this and this, they are the previous ones. Then this is the current. So we are going to get the previous purchase cost, which is 100 plus 60, which is, it's this plus this. These are the previous ones. Then this is the current, the most recent purchase that was made. So it will be 160,000 plus 39,000 divided by previous purchase unit plus current purchase unit. So 50 plus 100, those are the units or the quantity. So it's 150 plus the current purchase unit, which is this, 30. So 30. So this will be 199,000 divided by 180. And what you get is the average cost that will be used, which is 10106. That is it. So using this formula is the longest route that you can use. But the easiest route, you can just come here. Here. So you get this, the total, divide by this. What you get will be the average cost. So it's the same because when we added this plus this, we got this. Then when we added 150 plus 30, we got 180. So you can just get them from here. This divide by this and you get the figure to use here. So it is 100, what, sorry, 1106. So this times this, what we get is 44,240, like that. Then for the balance, it's going to be this minus this, 171 minus 40, it is 131, then this minus this, we are going to get 143,960, like that. Then we still continue on 15th, there were issues of 70 units. So on 15th, there were still issues of 70 units. of 70 units so what are we going to use as the as the rate so since there were no other purchases that were made we are still going to use the same thing this divide by this yeah the, this was the balance on the last purchases that were made so this divide by this we, we are going to still get this as our rate so it's one one zero six. So this times this, what you get is 
77 for 20 then for the balance this minus this what you get is 61 then this minus this what you get is 66,540 then we continue on 20th that we purchases of 30 units at 1500 I told you for purchases we rate them the way they are so on 20th that we purchases of 30 units at 1500 each so this times this what we get is 45 thousand then on 22nd that we purchases of 10 units at 1600 each so on 22nd that we purchases of 10 units at 1600 each so this times this it is 16000 then for the balance we, for, for the purchases we add so 61 plus 30 we get 91 then uh, 45 plus this we get 111,540 then this plus this it is 101 then this plus this it is uh, 127 540 like that then the way returns of 15 units and here they said the returns on 24th had been issues made on 15th on these issues that were made on 15th 70 15 of them were returned so on 24th the way returns they are 15 so what rate are we going to use on the 70 units this was the rate eh, that we use so we are going to use that as the same rate here one zero six so this times this what we get is sixteen five hundred ninety then the balance it is this plus this which is 116 then this plus this which is 144 130 like that then on 27th there were issues of 25 units issues of 25 units so on 27th there were issues of 25 units so what are we going to use as the rate So what we are going to use as the rate is um, this, the last balance for purchases, this, eh? this was the last balance. So this divide by this, then we shall get the rate for here. So it will be 1,243. So this times this, we shall get 31,075. Then on 30th, there were issues of 70 units. So 30th, there were issues of 70 units. What are you going to use as the rate? We still get this. This is the balance of the last under purchases. So it's going to be the same one, two, four, three. So it's going to be 87. Zero one zero. Then for the balances, this minus this, we get ninety one. Then this minus this, we get twenty one. Then here, this minus this, 
we get 113.055. Then this minus this, we get 26.045. So this is the value of the closing stock. It is 21 units at 26,045 UGX. That is the value of the closing stock. Then when it is time to calculate for the total cost, total cost of production, you just come here under issues like the total issues, this, total issues minus the returns, these were the returns, minus the returns, then minus any shortage or losses. So the total of this minus this, then minus this. What you get will be the total cost of production. Then the goods used in production, you get the quantity, like the total issues, this minus what was returned minus the shortages, this, eh? yeah. So that is the average cost method or the weighted average cost method. Hope have made a difference. Hope you've understood. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends. Let's catch up in my next video.